Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash just no mill. In today's episode, I think my mill is trying to steal my unborn baby. I had a baby and now I think me and my MIL are at war. JNM the car thief. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. I think my mill is trying to steal my unborn baby. So, a little backstory my partner's mother has never really liked me or made an effort to get to know me at all. My partner is 22 and I am 21, and ever since she found out about the pregnancy, she has been acting off, excited, but saying weird things. Started off by calling the baby her baby and saying she wanted to be called mama. Then saying she was getting so clucky to have a new baby come into her life then she started trying to force my partner and myself to move into her house, we live in our own place and have no reason to move out, then just started getting really pushy about it and not really taking no for an answer, now she just keeps talking about how she needs to get her house ready and buy a new rug for example, during my pregnancy I've experienced some depression and have had a bit of a hard time keeping my house clean, nothing extreme just leaving the dishes for a few days or not vacuuming the floor as much as it needs, and she has turned this into a reason to imply she's going to call welfare if my child isn't looked after. She has even asked my mother if she should contact them and my mother was shocked she would say something with no real reason. I'm honestly so stressed out she is going to try and somehow try and take my child away once she is born. And I don't know if seeking legal advice would make her actions worse as she is quite unpredictable. Also not sure if it should even be mentioned, but she is a hard drug addict and quite mentally ill and very recently got put in the hospital for having hallucinations, has anyone been in a situation like this before? Update for those who have asked about my partner's view on the situation, he is very forgiving when it comes to her actions and thinks she is all talk but will do nothing, he has told her that he will cut contact if she does anything but as so many of you have stated and I agree with it's too little too late. This morning she drove my partner to work as he doesn't have his license yet and she mentioned moving into her house again, he told her again that it wasn't going to happen and we are fine doing it on our own as we already have a huge support system and almost everything already ready for the baby, I'm 23 weeks pregnant, and she then stated that if we don't move into hers we have to move into my mother's, actually laughable as my mom lives in a two-bedroom unit and we have a large dog and a cat. I just don't think she will give up no matter what she is told so definitely taking advice and going no contact and hopefully getting my partner on board in doing the same. Comments locked due to excessive rule breaking. We are not a legal sub and this situation seems to be above Reddit's pay grade. OP, please seek professional and qualified advice and help. There are resources within the comments and in the sub sidebar. Best of luck to you and your family. The second someone threatens legal action to take a child from the parents you go and see and talk to a lawyer. Your husband needs his spine for this. 100000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
you may have grounds for at least a cease and desist order. Protect yourself and your baby at all costs and make sure your so is also on board with this. He has to be the one to put his foot down and enforce the boundaries. Where is your so with this? Once a threat to call child welfare is made she no longer gets a relationship with the child. You and so should be protecting LO and this MIL sounds like she's not even safe to be around. He's told her he will cut contact with her and not let her in the child's life if she does anything but I think that's too little too late. You know one way you could for sure lose your baby? Knowingly have them around someone who is on drugs or has drugs in their house. Think about that and then decide if it's worth it to you to let her be around your baby. And if you decide to not let her be around your baby, which is the best choice, she's probably going to call child services on you out of spite so definitely keep any evidence you have offered drug use and make sure your home is safe for baby so that when CPS comes you are prepared. She sounds dangerous. A hardcore drug addict is definitely someone I wouldn't allow around my children even if it's their grandparent. Good luck. Correct. Dude, if she's having hallucinations and is a hard drug addict, she shouldn't even meet your child, let alone see them or babysit them. Your MIL is a drug addict, mentally ill, and is threatened to call the authorities before the baby is born? Time to completely cut contact with her. At least you and the soon-to-be baby. OP quite buried the lead there. Your first job as parents is to protect your child. An active addict is not a safe person to be around your child. They are not a safe person to be around you. You and your partner need to set firm boundaries that she is not allowed in your home or to meet your child while she is using. If she gets sober, gets treatment for her other issues and can show long term that she is maintaining her sobriety and is no longer a risk then maybe your relationship can be re-established. I had a baby and now I think me and my MIL are at war. I've been with my so for 14 years. Mayel has always been a character. She was an only child, which I think is important because she sort of acts quite spoiled. But before having my baby, I bent to accommodate her, just like everyone else left in her life does. I had my daughter, first child, her first grandchild, 12 weeks ago and I feel like I just can't do it anymore. Whatever I was doing before, the saying what she wants to hear and agreeing when I don't agree, I just can't do it now and tbh I'm worried for what's to come. She constantly questions my every parenting decision, she disagrees with almost everything I do or has some unsolicited advice which I just have to follow, she tells me I need to do specific things, which are almost always outdated and not recommended, relating to parenting my daughter and passive aggressively comments things some which include her sounding almost like she's trying to tell me my daughter likes her and my husband's family more than me? It's bizarre. I could cope with the behavior before having my daughter, she expects everyone to revolve their lives around her and to an extent, I did, for my husband's sake and to keep the peace. We were quite friendly for the most part. But I think because it now involves my daughter, I just can't do it. I'm not sure why, assuming it's that animalistic instinct maybe. I want her to grow up kind and free, not being manipulated by her grandma like my husband, his siblings, and her ex-husband are, and previously me. I also can't hear the constant comments and jokes about weight and calories, I don't want that around my daughter. I want my daughter to love herself and appreciate more important qualities in people than just appearance. I can't sit and nod whilst she questions why I'm not waiting until the baby cries before tending to her. I can't bow to her constant hints of wanting me to do things for her whilst I'm taking mat leave to learn to be a new mom. I just can't and don't want to. I've already snapped once when she told me I should help her with her work whilst I'm sitting around all day and now I'm just ignoring her rather than bite or leaving early when she does something to piss me off. Today she insinuated I'd let my daughter fall of the table because I turned to the side for two seconds whilst she was on her mat with high sides, she can't roll and even if she could she ain't rolling over that, this is besides the point because I was standing right next to her but for context, she ran over and stole my seat next to her. I went to leave not long after this but she has now started to do this thing where she holds the baby for ages whilst I'm standing there ready to go and she won't pass her to me, I have to physically pull the baby out of her arms.
WTF is this all about please can someone explain? So thanks if you're still here reading my rant, my question is any long-standing sufferers had the same issue after having a baby and how did you cope? I'd like to enjoy my daughter and not have this time and my memories plagued with frustration surrounding my MALTIAXX. For years veteran in this war. Speak up. The sooner the better. My husband actively prevented this to keep the peace. It got worse and worse. We explained, asked, snapped, set boundaries to be ignored. Finally we went ballistic on her and gave her a long and painful timeout. Don't wait for her to hand the baby back. Don't ask. It's your daughter. Take her back when you want to. Ask her, have a silent countdown to 10 and then grab her and leave. You can do a lot with just standing up and taking your child, removing it whenever she's overstepping. For the rest you will need to speak up. For some, this is enough. If not you'll need to enforce more consequences. And if she's as evil as mine you will need to go ballistic. But first, try the things mentioned above. I suppose you could institute some consequences for her behavior. For example. Opie, alright, we're ready to leave. Give me my baby, please. She turns her back on you and walks away with hello. Opie, that's one week time out. Give me my baby, now. If she still refuses, it is now one week, plus two more for the second refusal. Timeouts add up real quick that way. Ha ha ha. Number 1, where your baby. If Himal whines she's not getting to hold the child tell her, no you're not. You've ignored me when I've wanted the baby back to the point where I've had to pull, name, out of your arms. That's not happening again. Number 2, I realize you mean the best, Mel, but that suggestion slash advice is outdated. I'm following my pediatrician's recommendations. If you're uncomfortable with that then it's probably best we end this visit. Congrats on your baby and your newfound liberty. My advice would be to tell her once, in the moment that certain topics are off limits. Come up with a script and repeat it ad nauseum. Be a broken record. Example. Mael, who boy you ate two scoops of ice cream? I would have just had one inch, looks you up and down in a condescending manner. You, hey Mael, I have decided recently that comments about my body, calories, what I eat, etc., are OFF limits. I know I have laughed them off before, but I have made a decision that these comments are not helpful and are actually hurtful. I am looking for your partnership in reducing the toxicity in my life. Do you think you can do this? Male, abfuscates, sputters, minimizes, denies, all the narcissistic BS. You, no matter what she says, what the content is, etc. Be that as it may, I have made this decision for my own health and my daughter's well-being. If you make these comments I will, name consequence here hang up the phone, leave your house, ask you to leave, etc. Then when she does it again you can remind her of this conversation, hey remember the 4th of July barbecue when I told you I would not tolerate certain comments? And what would happen? You just made one again. Goodbye. Wash, rinse, repeat with other crap she will try to pull as an extinction flare of her shitty behavior slash control tactics. And just slowly reduct contact. I also really like others' suggestions that she is not to visit you without DH there. He can make the arrangements, etc. Do not return her texts or calls except to text I will let you and DH work that out and do not engage further on the topic. You are awesome to see this so early in your child's life so you can prevent her from being around that toxic nastiness. Why are you visiting JNMIL so much if she's doing all this to you? Stop going to see her so much and don't let her come over any more than you can handle. When she's around your LO, wear your baby in a sling so she can't grab DD out of your arms. If she is holding LO and won't give her back as soon as you ask, tell her if she doesn't hand baby over now she will be in a two-week timeout of no baby visits at all. Will your DH stand up against his mom for you?
If he will, and he should, he should tell her to stop telling you how t raise your baby, it isn't her job. He should tell her to give the baby back when you want her. He should tell her not to grab DD from you. Sort of sounded like maybe op works with or for MIL. I couldn't understand why there was so much interaction. Stop seeing her so frequently and set boundaries. You're trying to leave and she won't give you your baby back? Are you kidding? I know it's tough, but you need to learn to stand up for you and your baby. Anytime she does anything that isn't okay you say MIL, that is inappropriate we are leaving. If she won't give you your baby you say MIL, that is my daughter. We are leaving, give her to me now or you will not be trusted to hold her again. Also you saying you put up with it, for your so? He needs therapy and needs to grow a backbone. He's not a little mummy's boy anymore, he's a grown man, well he will be once he gets off his mum's tit anyway. Now I'm just ignoring her rather than bite, or leaving early when she does something to piss me off. That's the right direction, especially leaving, do not accept the unacceptable. I went to leave not long after this, but she has now started to do this thing where she holds the baby for ages whilst I'm standing there ready to go, and she won't pass her to me, I have to physically pull the baby out of her arms. And this is her response. Keeping your baby from you like that is totally unacceptable and it's not as if she doesn't know that already. So what are you going to do about it? I would would take visits without your husband present off the table because she has broken your trust by withholding your baby from you. It's up to her to repair the relationship with you. And let her know that her endless criticisms as if she were in charge of your baby rather than you are not helping her case. Your husband had better be on board with this, because it's pretty clear cut that she is out of line. If sounds like my experience. We go weekly to my emails for a family dinner, that takes hours, and I was drinking the Kool-Aid so I was also trying to take the baby over once during the week, because I was spending time at my parents' house and wanted to be fair. However, my parents don't require us to attend regular dinners, they know we like seeing them so we all go over all the time anyway. My baby hates the car, screams the whole drive. One day I was sitting on the couch at my MLs, watching her hold my baby and listening to her tell me how sad she is about not seeing her other grandchildren, my BIL, a sale, and their three LOs live abroad, and now I hardly get to see my LO. I was floored, like, ma'am, we are here for hours every week plus I bring the baby here, for her to cuddle, no rest or meal for me, for an extra visit without my DH. I didn't know what to say so I said nothing but it aided me for days. My response? I stopped the extra visit and just go with my DH for dinner once a week with the rest of the family. I think she knows that she messed up but it made me see that I only get so much maternity leave and I'm not going to waste it out of misguided obligation to someone who tries to manipulate me. Her son, my DH, also shows no interest in making any effort other than these obligation dinners so too bad for her. Opie, next time raise your voice and say give me my baby, you know I am ready to leave. If you do this again, I will not bring baby stop catering to her. She only cares about herself and if she makes you feel inadequate, you will hand off parenting to her, she thinks, so tell her over and over thanks, but baby's pediatrician has up-to-date information and training and I will take their advice for baby's health and safety. Things have changed over the decades if you are feeling a little bitchy you can emphasize the word decades because it has been that long since she raised a baby. You are going to witness tantrums, so get it over with and let her stomp, cry, and lose her shit. Just let her know that doing so in front of baby will only happen once. You have a primal instinct to protect, listen to it. You are a wonderful mother simply because you have not yet grabbed something heavy, lobbed it at the back of her head, and blamed PPD, smiley face. JNM the car thief I'm currently in C with her primarily due to her drug addiction, it took me a long time though as I have a little sister, JYS, though she is almost 18 now. L Last year I got my first ever new car, yay. My JNM said this was another reason that showed I was up myself and thought I was better than everyone else, the other reason being I have a good job. I obviously don't think I'm better than anyone, I just don't want to be around drug users and alcoholics, especially with kids, so I don't keep those kinds of people in my circle. Anyway, my old car wasn't too flash, but it was still good. 
It wasn't too old, 15 years odd, was tidy, safe, reliable and newly licensed. So my DH and I decided we would give it to my sister. She goes to course and works full time, sometimes until midnight. Not to mention, it would give me relief to know she can leave JNMs herself if any bad situation arose. My sister was so happy. I took her down to buy some car seat covers, mats etc. and kit it all out and she just couldn't stop smiling. I did my due diligence and had taken her out for drives to get used to the car. She has her license. She, she took the car, all was well and that was that. Or so I thought. JNM messaged me a week later saying she doesn't know what to say to me, she's so disappointed I would give my sister a car that is better than JNM's when she could have used it. That sister is too irresponsible to have such a nice car. Then she started with the emotional manipulation how it will be all my fault if my sister has a car crash and how would I feel if anything happens to her. Because I'm no contact, I don't respond to any of her messages. Yesterday my sister messages me asking if I have a spare key for the car as my JNM used sister's key to move sister's car and lost it. Now, I'm sure you guys are with me in my suspicion that JNM did not lose the key and has taken it for herself. Thankfully, I kept a spare and I let sister know. But because I thought JNM had kept the key, I told sister this I do have a spare, but I'd be very concerned that the key has been stolen, so I will pay for a locksmith to come and schnage your locks now. Don't let your car out of your sight until the locksmith comes. Let JNM know exactly what the plan is. About 10 minutes later I get a text saying please do not give, sister, her key or get a new one for her. I've taken her key as she's been driving irresponsibly. I'm really concerned. You'd never forgive yourself if anything happened to her. I, I again, didn't respond. I didn't trust that JNM didn't make any copies so I sent the locksmith around to change the lock and paid for an alarm to be installed. I told sister that mum had stolen her key and to never allow JNM access to the car again. The car is still in my name, and after deliberating I decided to make a police complaint about JNM stealing the key, it helped she had texted and admitted to it. She won't get in trouble, but there's a police record about it now. This was for two reasons one. In case she tried to do anything again, there's a recorded history and two. To show JNM I'm serious that if she tries to pull shit, I won't put up with it. If you made it all the way to the end, thanks for reading my success story. Bravo! Seriously I don't understand parents saying they don't want their kids to have a good car for their first car in case they get into an accident. The safety features on newer cars are significantly better than older and more likely to protect the new driver if they do make a mistake while driving. My mom specifically bought a new car for the first time when I got my learners so I could learn how to drive in a car with airbags and ABS brakes, and a ton of other safety features her old 1980s car didn't have. I know that you can get little tracking tags, given your JNM proclivity to help herself it might be worth discussing with sister putting one in the glove compartment with the agreement you will never check it unless she tells you the car is missing, or you have reasonable suspicion that she could be in trouble. Wow. You are all over JNM and her schemes. Well done. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Unfortunately it's all from experience I used to always just roll over, because I'm so empathetic it's uncomfortable for me to imagine how upset she will be. But thankfully after years of crap, it no longer affects me. You are a legend. You read her like a book and handled it like a pro. Go you. Thank you. Feeling a bit legendary if I don't mind saying so myself. Not looking forward to the flying monkeys when they find out I actually made a police report though. Brilliant idea changing the car lock and filing a police report. Jane Mama now knows you ain't playing no more. Yes. Now K flying monkeys. You're an awesome big sister. Something tells me your sister will be finding a palsy of her own soon enough when she's able. That car was the best thing you could have ever done for her, and smart on changing the locks, if anything tell your sister to always keep that key on her when at home, 
Can't trust the NM to not find a way to get to that key when sis isn't paying attention. Total respect. And you patterned excellent self-care for your sister. You're a boss. Thanks. I'll be holding my sister's hand every step down the road of appropriate boundaries. You were wonderful. Your sister is really fortunate to have you. I think it's awesome you were able to do this for JYS. Do you think she'll be able to move out soon? Does she have a plan in mind yet? Good for you for disrupting Genmum plans to steal your sister's car. She's been staying between my Jayanana's house and my JNM's as JNM is apparently away for weeks at a time working. She has been talking about saving up to move, part of the reason I didn't want her to touch her savings for car, with her friend flatting, but I think it will take some time. Good job. Well done. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.